All right, before we start chapter three, I want to go over uh, mean, median, and mode, um, different types of averages. The first one is the mean. And how we find the mean, we add up all of the numbers, and then we divide by the total of numbers that are there. So we have the digits one through nine. And if we add those up, um, we get three, six, 10, uh, 21, 28, 36, 45. So the sum of all of these digits equals 45. Now we divide by the number of terms that we have. We obviously have nine terms, one through nine. We divide by nine, and that makes the mean five. You are going to have an assignment where you will have a bunch of numbers, um, you need to find the mean, the median, and the mode. And we'll talk about what the median and the mode are here in a little bit. Um, the first thing, though, that you should always do is put the digits least to greatest. And I've already done that for you um, here on the next one. So the mean, you add up all the numbers, divide by the total of numbers that are there. That gives you your mean. Okay, And it's kind of an average of the digits. And if you, th if you think about it, 1 through 9, the middle number is a 5. Okay. So it works out pretty well. The median. The median, if you think of a median on a road, on a two or on a four lane highway, the median is the middle number. And this is, once again, very important. Before you start the median, you must put the digits least to greatest. Um, and we need to find the middle term between the digits that are given to us. So if we start crossing off even digits on both sides, you will see that we arrive with five as our median, okay? And the mean, the median, and the mode can all be the same thing. Right now, the mean and the median are the same. Now, I had an odd number of digits. I had nine digits. What happens when I add a 10th digit in there and I just put the number 10 on the end? Okay, if I start crossing things off on both ends, you see that I, I don't have this middle term in here, okay? I have two terms left. So what you're going to do between those two terms, you're going to find the mean. Well, the mean is going to be 5 plus 6, which is 11, divided by 2. And that will get, get you your median. So we're going to take 5 plus 6, which is 11, divided by 2. And so now your median is 5.5. It doesn't necessarily have to be a number that is given to you. Okay. But if you have an even number, if you have an even number of terms that they throw your way, you're going to have to add the two middle terms and divide by two. Okay, so that's the median. The mode. The mode stands for most often. Okay, should be easy to remember. M-O, most often. And if you look up here, we do not have a term that appears the most often. They're all the same. So we would actually write down for this one, we are going to put down no mode. Okay. Now, let's say I added a 5, a 4, um, another 5. Okay. What term occurs the most? Well, it would be the 5. The 4 occurs twice, but the 5 occurs three times, so then your mode would be 5. Okay. So mean, median, and mode. Um, Go ahead and go to page 40 in your textbook, and you can work on 1 through 4 as your first assignment um, before we get into chapter 3 and equations. All right, we are now going to start chapter 3, and this chapter is loaded with equations. Two-step equations, multiple variables, um, and we're just going to go through these um, one by one and get um, a paper from Mr. Vogt um, when you get to the section and he'll show you where you can put your notes down so that you can copy all these equations and you have something to refer back to. So before you start watching section 3.1, make sure you talk to Mr. Vogt and let him know. Okay? All right, so the first, first equation. <clears throat> we want to get x by itself, all right? And so what we always teach is cover up, cover up, that x and that coefficient that comes in front. All right, we're trying to get x by itself. We need to move the attachment over first. All right, 
And if it's added, you'll learn we did one-step equations before, we need to do the inverse. Kind of an um, important term in algebra. We have to do the inverse operation. Remember, addition and subtraction are inverses of each other, and multiplication and division are inverses of each other. All right, so in order to move that one, we have to subtract it. And we can put it underneath the five because these are like terms. You learned that in the last chapter, okay? So what I have left is four X, the ones cancel, and five minus one is four. Now you are to a one-step equation, which is what we just got done doing. Divide by four, divide by four, and X equals one. On the sheet of paper that uh, Mr. Vogt's giving you, there is a section to check your answer. What you should do is take one and plug it back in for x into the original equation. So you're going to see four times one plus one equals five. And you should be asking yourself, does that work? Four plus one is five, five equals five. Yes, it is good, okay? So make sure you go back on that paper, check your problem, check your work, um, and make sure that your equation balances. Okay, here's the next one. <clears throat> the first step, once again, cover up the variable. We subtract eight, move it over. We have three n, your eights cancel. I have a negative six. Okay, one step equation, divide by three, divide by three, and equals a negative two. And I'm not gonna go back and check them. Um, go ahead and put that down on your notes page. Right, next problem. Now we have a division with still two-step equation. We have to always get rid of that attachment first. And so that attachment is a negative eight. We are going to add, remember inverse operation, opposite operation, these two signs should be different. Okay, I'm left with b over four equals nine. b over four, that's division. The inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm gonna multiply by four on both sides b should equal 36. Okay. One more of those. Opposites. We have to add 2. We have c over 6 equals 8. We have division. Opposite is multiplication. Multiply by 6. Cancel. c equals 48. And you might run into some positive, negative numbers. Okay, you've, you've learned those in the first chapter. Um, so you might see that some of those somewhere along the line. Okay, all right. So now you see the 12, the 4s, it, it's switched around. And they're, they're gonna appear all over the place, okay? It could appear over here, it could appear over here, it could appear over here. We're still covering this up and we have to get rid of what is attached to that variable. Okay, the term that's not part of the variable, we have to move first. So we're going to subtract 12. Okay, and that's 0. And lots of people forget this negative. You have to bring down that negative with you. And negative 12 minus 12, signs are the same. We have to add and keep the common sign. So we're looking at that, negative 24. Okay, now we have a one-step equation. We have multiplication, so we need to divide. Do not forget to take the negative with you. Okay, this isn't this isn't added. This isn't an inverse. All right, the inverse is doing division. You have to take your your negative sign with that four. And when you divide by negative four on both sides, you get six. Okay, and go ahead and pause the video if you want to try this one um, for yourself. And here we go. Subtract 6, that cancels, negative 2m, don't forget your negative sign, 8 minus 6 is 2, divide by a negative 2 on both sides, we have m equals a negative 1. Okay. And here's your first assignment um, with two-step equations. If you have any questions, please ask Mr. Vogt. Um, Keep your notes page because there will be more to add to that. Um, if you run out of space on your notes page, ask Mr. Vote. He's got plenty of them to give to you. Um, but here's your assignment, page 123, 8 through 19, 23 through 26. 
All right, we will now start section 3-2, and you're going to run into one-step equations, two-step equations, and now it's going to get a little bit more difficult because they're going to add some terms in there that you need to combine before you start the two-step equation process. Okay, and as you can see with this first equation, and, and remember, take out your notes page um, to write these down on there. And if you need a little bit of help with that, ask Mr. Vote about it again. Um, but take that out. Okay, so now, if you can see up here, we have, we have some ends that we can put together. Okay, and how we're going to do that is I'm just going to rewrite this. to 3n plus 2n minus 40 equals 15. All I did was I rearranged the terms. When you rearrange the terms, make sure you have the sign, like this has a negative 40, make sure that sign is with the 40. And this plus 2n is with the plus 2n, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a box around this. And what's that's, what that's gonna do for us is we need to combine those. 3n plus 2n is equal to 5n minus 40, equals 15. Now you're right back to your two-step equations um, that we learned in the previous chapter. So we cover up the variable, move the 40 over, the inverse operation, these signs have to be different, add 40 over here, and bring down everything that we have left. Okay, now you're to a one-step equation, divide by 5, and we end up with n equals 11. Once again, go back onto the far box on your notes page and check your answer. You check your answer. Remember, we plug 11 in for n, plug 11 in for n, and this side, whatever you get over here, should equal 15. Go ahead and check your answer um, for practice. Okay, now this one's a little bit different, but you're gonna see two types of problems. Um, in this section, you're going to see problems with parentheses. You're going to see problems where you have to combine terms. Here we have parentheses. And if you remember back in previous chapter, when we had a number in front of the parentheses, that meant multiplication, and we have to apply the distributive property. And when we apply the distributive property, we take 2 times x. That gives us 2x. We take 2 times a negative 1, and that gives us a negative 2 we still have equal to 6. And what do we have now? We have a two-step equation, which, we, which um, we have been working on. So cover up the variable, add 2 over. Then up with 2x, those are gone. 8, divide by 2, x equals 4. All right, get that copied down and we'll go on to the next one. This one combines the two types of problems that we just did. It has distribution in it, and then it's also gonna have like terms that you have to put together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute. Order of operation, we have to do parentheses. We don't have parentheses, but we do have multiplication, so that's gonna be next, okay? Bring down the 13, bring down the 2y, and now we can start our distribution. So we take a negative three times y, which gives us a negative 3y, and a negative 3 times 4, which gives you a negative 12. And if we look here, on, we have an equal sign right down the middle. Okay, look over here, what can we put together? We can put together our y terms. When we put those together, we end up with a negative 1y. We still bring down our negative 12. Okay, and we have 13 over here. There's your equal sign. Okay, now you're to a two-step equation. We can add 12. Once again, those two signs have to be different. We end up with 25 equals a negative 1y. Now you have a negative, you have a negative 1y. You have to have a positive variable by itself when you solve for it. So we have to get rid of that negative 1. It's just like having a negative 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever in front. You still have to divide by it. Okay? So what that gives us is y equals a negative 5. And it's okay for your variable to be on the other side. Okay. Um, not too difficult of a problem here. 
First of all, identify what are your like terms. And if you look, we can put together our 4 and our 7. That gives us 11. We still have plus x and it equals 10. One step equation. Subtract 11. Remember, if there's no sign in front of the number, it is known to be positive. It has to be opposite signs. Those are canceled. x equals a negative 1. Go back and check. Plug it in and check it in that available box. Okay, this one here, we only have two terms on the left side. They can be put together. 3x plus 2x, we add them. We are to a one-step equation. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 5. Okay, here's your assignment on uh, page 127, 11 through 19, and 22 through 27. Okay, we will now start chapter 3, or section 3, and what you are going to see here initially is you're going to see variables on both sides of the equal sign. And to keep this as simple as possible, if we can move all of our variable terms to the left side and all of our constant terms to the right side, it'll keep everything unified for us um, and that's the way I will proceed um, teaching this. Okay, We're always going to move our coefficients and variables that are together to the left side and constant terms to the right side. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to move the 3n over here. Okay, And then bring down everything that we have. So we have 2n minus 2 equals those cancel, we moved it over, equals 6. Now what do we have? We have a two-step equation. Okay, one step, now we're back to what you should already know. Okay, so add 2, 2n equals 8, divide by 2. Once again, go ahead and plug this in and check it. to make sure that both sides of the equation are equal with each other. Okay. If you need to copy down the problem, go ahead and hit pause at any point in time. Get the problem copied down. Once again, we want to move all of our variables to the left side. So our variable term is 11y. It's a positive. Okay. So I got to make sure I do opposite sign and I'm going to match it up with the y over here. 8 minus 11 is a negative 3y. Still have plus 4 equals a negative 17. That's gone. Now we are to a two-step equation. Okay, Subtract 4, subtract 4. We get a negative 3y. Your 4s are gone. And you have a negative 21. One-step equation. Once again, don't get this confused that this is addition or this is subtraction. It's a negative 3. We still have multiplication here. We have to divide by a negative 3. Take the sign with you. y equals 7. Okay, here's your next one. And once again, keeping the idea of moving your variables to the left side, it's just a lot easier to remember that you you can most certainly move them to the right side it, that does not matter as long as you're doing whatever you do to one side of the equation you do to the other you're fine okay but the way we talked about this we're gonna move all of our variables over at once okay and because this is our third or fourth problem in this section I'm also going to do both steps at once so you can add one over here, all right? This is just for those of you that can do multiple steps at once. There is a one in front of that M. Now you just go up and down and simplify. So what is one minus nine? That is a negative eight M. These ones are canceled. We have an equal sign. Your nines are canceled and we have 16. So we kind of just skipped a little bit of work. We did, we moved both terms that we needed to move in one step. We have 
a one-step equation left over, we need to divide by a negative 8. Those cancel, m equals a negative 2. You should still be able to plug it in um, for m up here in the original equation, and both sides should balance. Okay, and here is your assignment starting on page 133, 3 through 8, 11 through 22, 23 through 26. You'll notice that there are not any word problems or there shouldn't be any word problems. Um, we are just working on the algebra portion of things right now. We will get to the word problems um, later. All right, your next assignment will be to do the mid-chapter quiz on page 139. Just do 1 through 15 um, and turn it in when you have completed it. We will now go on to section 3-4, and this section is on inequalities. So first of all, let's talk about the inequalities and what they are. Um, your inequalities are going to be less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. The way you remember this is if you make an L with your left hand, your left thumb and finger, okay, and you turn it, that's how you remember less than, and then the other one is greater than. Greater than points to the right, less than will point, here if you think of this as an arrow, will point to the left. Okay? The solution of an inequality, um, the difference between an equation and an inequality, the solution to an equation was one value. The solution to an inequality is going to be any value that makes the inequality true. For instance, if I gave you the inequality x is greater than 4, your solutions are going to be any values that are greater than 4. So for instance, you could use 5, you could use 6, 7, and so on. You could not use a negative 3 because negative 3 is not greater than 4. So that would not be a value that would work. Now, you could also use 4.5. 0, 1, because that is greater than 4, okay? So it's not just um, restricted to whole numbers, okay? So now let's look at graphing some of these integers. Um, two things to figure out or talk about here. First of all, um, when you make your line graph, okay, the number is 4. I'm going to put the 4 in one of those two spots. Okay, and if you think of your number line, remember the numbers get bigger as we go to the right, they get smaller as we go to the left. Okay, um, and I'm going to do the negative 5 here just so we can work on the number line. Put negative 5 there. Remember as we go to the left, they get smaller. Okay, and as they go to the right, they're getting bigger. Remember your negatives, numbers themselves get bigger, but because of the negative sign, that makes the number smaller. Okay, all right, now. <clears throat> Let's go back up here. So I want to graph all of the values that are less than 4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an open circle on 4, and I want all the values that are less than that. So I'm going to draw up and over. Okay, That is showing me all values that are less than 4. Now, that circle, I am not going to fill it in because it is not equal to 4. Okay, leave the circle open. This one here, I want all values that are greater than a negative 5. I'm going to put an open circle on negative 5 and go greater than. Okay, and then let's put up the numbers for the bottom ones. We've got 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2. All right, and we'll do this one too. Okay, so let's graph this one. This is x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to put this, and I'm going to close the circle. All right, because it is equal to. Equal to is a closed circle. If there's no equal to, it's an open circle. And my arrow is going to point to the left. So this one here is going to be closed because it is equal to. And it points to the right. Now, if you notice... Look at the inequalities and look at the arrows. This inequality 
pretend I had an arrow here, and an arrow there, arrow there, and arrow there. The arrow match up, matches up with the direction of the inequality. That is only true, and it only happens that way, is if your variable is on the left-hand side of the inequality statement, okay? If I were to flip this around and the x was over here and the 4 was over here, that would not work, okay? That little trick only works as if the variable is on the left-hand side. Now, we are given one-step inequalities to solve. You solve them just like an equation, okay? And well, there's one rule you have to remember. We'll get to that in a little bit, okay? But this is going to want you to solve and then graph. So to solve it, we subtract 7. Those cross off. We have greater than. We have a negative 4. And then they want you to throw it on a number line. So we have negative 4, negative 3, negative 5. It's an open circle on 4, negative 4. And it points to the right. So that is solving and then graphing. Here's your next one, and if you notice, the inequality is on the right-hand side, and we're going to talk about how we, how we work with that here in a second. So I'm going to solve it first, okay, 6, greater than or equal to y. Now if you look at this, this says 6 is greater than or equal to y. It would not be correct to do this. Put a closed circle on 6 go like that because that's the way the arrow. Remember, that does not work for this one, okay? Because if I read this backwards, going this way, it says y is less than or equal to 6. That is why I always tell kids to put the variable on the left-hand side. And when you do that, you have to flip the inequality as well. And if the way you understand that, right here it's pointing to y, so this one's pointing to y. This is what we need to graph. So we have 5, 6, and 7. We're going to put a closed circle on 6, and it's less than. Okay, remember closed circle? And I'll put an X through this because that is not correct. Okay? Same thing. Subtract 9. We'll get negative 15. Is less than or equal to X. Flip that around x is greater than or equal to negative 15. <clears throat> I'm not going to graph it. You should put a closed circle on negative 15, and it should go to the right. One more. F5. We get z is less than 6. Open circle on 6. circle less than. Pause the video if you need to to copy this down. Okay, and here's your assignment with one step inequalities. Page 142, do 3 through 10 and 12 through 32. All right, section 3.5, and this is very similar to uh, the last section, except this section is going to involve multiplying and dividing um, with inequalities. Once again, you solve this one-step inequality just like you solve the one-step equation. Um, keep that uh, inequality sign. The one thing you have to remember is anytime we multiply by a negative number, and it's the one that you, anytime we multiply or divide by a negative number, and it's the number that you're moving to the other side of the inequality, you must flip the inequality. Okay, you have to flip it. Now, we don't have any negative numbers here on this first one, okay? We have division by 6, so we're going to multiply by 6. 6 is cancel, and greater than 42, okay? Once again, when we go back to graphing, just draw three numbers, that's fine. 41, 42, 43, it's an open circle on 42, and it's greater than, okay? Next slide. Here is your negative number. This is what we are going to multiply by. Because it is negative, we must switch the inequality. 
Okay, so multiply by negative 4 on both sides. These cancel, I'm left with t. I have flipped my inequality already, and I get a negative 32. So t is greater than or equal to a negative 32. And once again, let's check this. Let's plug this back in here to the original equation. So I get a negative 32 divided by a negative 4 less than or equal to 8. Well, negative 32 divided by negative 4 is 8. Is 8 less than or equal to 8? Yes, it is. So we are okay. Okay, your next one. Here we have multiplication shown, so we need to divide. This number is not negative. We do not need to flip the inequality. This number is negative, but the one that flips the inequality is the one that we are moving to both sides. It's not negative. I can keep my inequality as greater than. Okay, cancel there, and I get negative 4. This would be open circle on negative 4, arrow pointing to the right. Your next problem. Here we have multiplication. I'm going to divide by negative 7. This number is negative. I must flip the inequality. Okay, I'm left with S and a negative 2. So the one thing you have to remember in this section is anytime I multiply or, or divide by a negative number, I must flip the inequality. Okay, and there's your assignment for this section, page 148, 12 through 27, and 30 through 35. The last section um, is basically on two-step two -step inequalities. It's combining the last two sections that we have gone over um, using the concepts from solving two-step equations. Uh, get the x by itself. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the inequality. Okay, so let's get started here. Subtract 1, subtract 1. Covered that up, I had moved that other term over. I'm left with 4x is greater than 0. Once again, you might be asking, why don't I switch the inequality? I am not multiplying or dividing here. I am subtracting. I do not flip the inequality. Okay, divide by 4, and x equals 0. Okay, remember, multiply or divide by negative number, we flip the inequality. Here's your next one. Okay, cover this up. We must subtract the 6 first. Don't switch your inequality. Okay, that's gone. Negative 14 minus 6 is a negative. 20. <clears throat> now we have to get x by itself. Here we multiply by a negative 2 and multiply by a negative 2. This number is negative. I must flip my inequality. Okay, x is are gone. I'm left with x equal or x is greater than 40. Okay, and one more. Um, negative 6, negative 6. One step equation. Times by 5. I get 20 is greater than y. Remember, make it easier when you graph. Put your y over on the left hand side. When you switch these two, you must also switch the inequality. So you're left with y is less than 20. Okay. Here is one of the um, tougher of the problems, only because we have a variable on both sides of the inequality. Keep the same rules from when you were solving your uh, multiple step inequalities. We always get those variables to the left hand side. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to subtract a y here. So I move this y over, that's gone. And I'm going to subtract a 2 over here, so that's gone. Okay, 5y minus y is 4y, is less than or equal, 34 minus 2 is 32. Now you have a one-step equation. Divide by 4, divide by 4, you're left with y is greater than or equal, or excuse me, less than or equal to 8. Okay, and... That should conclude this chapter. Your last assignment is page 153, 10 through 21. Remember, after you get done with this section, um, you need to let Mr. Vote know 
you will have uh, the review section at the end, followed by the chapter three test. Here is your review assignment, page 156, 6 through 33. Please do this. Let Mr. Vote know when you have started it. Um, ask him if you have any questions, and then you will take your test.